Hello, welcome back to another cave devlog. In the past few weeks I've been working on some exciting new features for the game. Over 1000 people played my game on itch.io and gave super useful feedback on gameplay mechanics. People really enjoyed playing my game, but I noticed that a lot of people said it feels currently a bit repetitive. And this is what I want to change. The problem currently is that everything is random and I want to add the concept of a predictable world that is reproducible and that you can explore. The first thing I did was making minerals visible in the world. What I mean by that is that once you start mining a rock, you can immediately see what it will contain. This will promote the exploration factor of the game, but also it's a bit more intuitive and you don't feel like you get a random item. There is a little problem though. Minerals currently are determined once you finish the mining process. This now needs to change and I need to figure out what item will spawn before I actually start mining it. For now I did a little trick to calculate that, but this leads me to my next point. I actually need to change the way how I decide what minerals are in the world. And that's Seeded Worlds. A Seeded World is effectively procedurally generated game content that is unique to the seed provided. What is a seed you may ask? A seed is basically a number. If you provide the number 4, you will always get the same world with the same properties like the structure of the world, the NPCs and also the minerals that spawn in their locations. Let's say we had such a seed, a number as an input, and based on that number we want to place minerals in the world. It's quite expensive to place them all manually and also I want to achieve that some minerals are clustered together and also I want to control how they are placed in the world. We can use a little trick and that is called Perlin Noise. Perlin Noise is an algorithm developed by Ken Perlin in the year 1983 for the movie Tron. Perlin Noise generates some kind of cloud pattern that we can use to generate our cave. However, there is a much better solution called Simplex Noise. Unfortunately, we cannot use Simplex due to licensing issues. Therefore, someone had the idea to implement something called Open Simplex. This is a Pico 8 demo of the Open Simplex Noise I found online. And you can control the noise by configuring various parameters, such as the period or the octaves. And we're gonna use this specific algorithm in Godot to control where the minerals should spawn, as well as generating cave structures. How can we actually use this to spawn minerals? Well, effectively, a Perlin noise is a value between 0 and 1 for every single pixel. So we can define some kind of threshold for every item to determine if it should spawn. Luckily for me, I didn't have to implement the open simplex noise algorithm myself. Godot Engine comes with this algorithm out of the box and we can use that to actually do what we want. Jumping into the code, I've created a mineral item resource that internally uses the open simplex noise object by Godot. I can configure the noise for each mineral item individually. This allows me to specify the spawning and control where which item should spawn. To debug the item spawning, I developed a debug view that would allow me to see where which item would potentially spawn. And as you can see, trying out different seeds generates different results and the current distribution of items is a bit wonky, so let's fix that. To modify the spawning of the copper, we can increase the period to influence where it should spawn. However, it significantly increases the size of the clusters and we can even increase it more by reducing the threshold. However, we don't want really these huge clusters of copper, otherwise players get all the items in the world. So a too high value is also not good because no copper will spawn, so a value of 0.7 might be actually ideal here. Configuring the spawning of the diamond is a bit more tricky because we don't want actual clusters of diamonds. Diamonds are supposed to be very rare, so we can actually influence the way how diamonds spread in the world. 
We can, for example, increase the scarcity of diamonds, so the edges are a bit more distributed, but we can also increase the period massively, which means the peaks or the highest values of the simplex noise are actually further apart. The current threshold is way too high, so I'm slightly decreasing it to make the diamonds appear, but now there are way too many, so I'm slightly increasing it again. I also wasn't really happy with the starting area. Well, it is currently handcrafted, but what I actually want to achieve is that the player feels like every single game is a different one. So I want to make sure that the cave where the player starts out in is also randomly generated. The first solution that came to mind was cellular automata. The idea is that you can generate caves based on a flooding algorithm. However, after implementing it, I realized that I didn't have full control of how the caves are generated. Also, it would take a long time to generate the caves and I need a very quick solution since the game is supposed to be played in the browser. Therefore, I discarded the idea of cellular automata and instead I used something else. Our old friend Mr. Open Simplex Noise. The solution for this is easier than you may think. I create an Open Simplex Noise object and generate a value for every coordinate. And simply based on a threshold, I paint on the tile map based if the value is smaller or higher. I am very happy with the result. The cave structures are random enough and keep in mind that this entire cave structure is based on a seed. Providing the same value will effectively result in the exact same cave structure, which is exactly what we want. The spawning of minerals as well as the structure of the caves are now determined by the seed provided. However, that seed shouldn't be random. Ideally, I want the player to insert the seed, so the player can actually decide to replay certain scenarios. Therefore, I went ahead and designed some kind of main menu. The idea is that the player can insert a random string and when entering the world, I'm taking the hash code of that string to act as the seat. I also took this opportunity to design a sound effect for typing in characters. Before I can start implementing the actual crafting system, I have to rethink how I'm gonna do the equipment. In the previous video, I already redefined the inventory system, but I'm gonna take it a step further by completely changing how the UI works. After creating some mockups in Esprite, I implemented it in Godot and it works like this. Similar to games like Minecraft, you have now an action bar where you can drag tools into. I wanted to solve the problem of having multiple tools and switching quickly between them and the previous design really didn't cater for that. I also improved the accessibility. A good way to test accessibility in your game is by taking a screenshot and turning it black and white. If you cannot see what is currently active, you have to use certain tricks like extended borders to make selected items more visible. Now the game is finally ready for a crafting system. By the way, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and also join my Discord server. On there you can actively contribute to discussions on my game and also talk to other fellow game developers. Speaking of accessibility, I've also added Xbox controller support. The difficulty there was to implement a way of showing what the current controls are. I created a new autoload script called input.gd and in there I connected the joy connection change signal on the input class. Whenever you connect an Xbox controller or disconnect it, this signal gets triggered and I can inform other components to change. This signal is then consumed by UI components that show the current control scheme. The scheme is defined by the input GD script and it points to what Xbox button or what keyboard button is mapped to which key. 
all changes I've presented to you today will be part of the next big smithing update, version 0.1. In the meantime, feel free to check out Cave on Itch.io and also leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. See you next time.